Matt, Grant, Channing Fry, recent retiree. Uh, Carlos Boozer right over there. How are you holding up, by the way? I'm great. A little sleepy, but I'm good. A lot yeah, of green good. teas. A lot of green teas. Good for the antioxidants. Um, I need deep analysis on this game from you guys tonight. Kevin Durant was really, really, really good. That's, that's my up. take. I want to hear what you guys have to say. <laughs> you don't woke him up. <laughs> you, you don't woke him up, and you got it. I've seen that look before. You know, listen, they, they're playing without turning the ball over. They're shooting well. They're defending. They have energy. Um, they're unstoppable when they play like this. When they're all locked in, especially on the defensive end, if they get stopped that are playing at that high of level, it's tough. But uh, I still think the Clippers can get one. They're just going to need to slow the game down, um, not let the team get 132 points. Yeah, I'm not sure the Clippers can get one. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I don't know I mean, the about way that. they played. I mean, yeah, listen, I'm not saying no. Anything's saying possible. Maybe. But, but yeah. they they really were. And Channing made a great point. They were so locked in on the defensive end. And just the switching and the effort and the multiple efforts, uh, when they're engaged like that, I mean, they're, you know, obviously the Golden State Warriors, they're, they're, they are as good as any team. And, and that man right there, Kevin Durant, from the start, all the talk, all the speculation, all the chatter and noise, and he was aggressive early. Uh, and he was on fire early. Came out 41 points in the first quarter for the team. And he set the tone. And uh, they just fed off his play. He is Kevin Durant. Yeah. Speaking of defense, they had 11 block shots. Yeah. Mm. That's crazy for a team that's generally not known for blocking shots. That's, that's it's taking care of the paint. And nobody more than two. Uh, defensively, the effort was there. And, and Booz, you know, Steve Kerr said they got what they deserved in game two. I think they got what they deserved tonight as well because I don't know if that was a wake-up call, but it was an awakening by the Warriors. That's yeah, for sure. definitely an awakening. I mean, they, honestly, they probably thought they should be up 3-0 in the series. They played well enough to win game two, but they didn't finish it out, which is weird for them, obviously being up that much and having that kind of comeback happen. But tonight, like, like everyone said, Grant and Chandler hit on the head. They were locked in, and when they're locked in defensively especially, they're tough to beat because offensively they can erupt at any moment. Is this the kind of thing that carries over? I mean, Steve Kerr has, has had these moments over the last couple of years with this team where clearly they coast a little bit and he goes crazy and he pulls his hair out and they lose a game and then they come back and do something like this. I mean, it, it can carry over. I mean, this team obviously is so good. Complacency, as you said, has been the issue, particularly the last couple of years. Uh, even last year in the playoffs, I mean, just like, you know, not playing at their best the first half. And then, Here or there, yeah. And then second, you know, third quarter coming out and, and playing great basketball. Uh, but, you know, getting getting embarrassed, you know, where you have that up big lead and then you, you, you lose the game down the stretch. Uh, all that had happened, it, it kind of galvanized them today. They came out engaged. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I think they'll stay engaged, but sometimes something, at least throughout this series, mm -hmm. but sometimes something like that can sort of force your hand, force you to sort of, okay, we got to take care of business. We don't want to go down here, you know, 2-1 on the road. So they were as locked in as fo and as focused as I've seen them in a long, long time. And it wasn't like everyone played necessarily great. I mean, Durant was great, and, you know, they shot the ball pretty well collectively as a team. Uh, but they were moving the ball, 35 assists. Uh, the ball was hopping. It I mean, it was just, you it can't was, defend you can't defend, defend it. When they're, when they're playing their, yeah, good, their makes, best basketball yeah. as a team, there's not, there's, I don't think there's anybody that can beat them. 56, 30-point postseason game of Kevin Durant's career. He had uh, 38, five off his postseason career high. No surprise, Andrew Bogut got the start tonight for DeMarcus Cousins, who's expected to miss the rest of the postseason Bogut played 25 minutes, 14 rebounds, and 8 points. And, and some folks have embraced the argument that he might ultimately be a better fit than Cuz as a starter in particular for this Warriors team. Where, where do you stand on, on how complementary he is to what else the Warriors are trying to do? Yeah, he's, he's just like Draymond a little bit. He can pass, he can initiate offense. He also had five assists in this game, yeah. obviously with the 14 rebounds and the shooting four for five from the floor. But he's, he's one of those guys that does a great job team defense. Uh, he's a big body, great passer, very unselfish, which is what you need around all those other scorers out there. And he knows the system. He's you know, Obviously, he's been playing basketball back home in his own country of Australia. He's in good shape. Uh, he's had a huge basketball IQ. We were just talking about that yeah. in the green mm -hmm. room. Super uh, smart guy. Super smart basketball player. He's a perfect fit for them, especially moving forward without Boogie. I think for me, uh, you know, I was kind of worried about how's his conditioning going to be, how's his body going to hold up. But after watching him today, he's a spry, young, 34-year-old well, <laughs> yeah. guy. But he's moving. He's taking charges. Um, he's communicating. Um, he looks great. And I think, like, the fact that he's on the offensive glass, he's being a presence down there, 
Um, I think he's their anchor defensively, and it allows Draymond to roam, double team when he needs to, get the ball out of their scorer's hands, and uh, send it to the big seven-footer. Now, if he can continue to stay healthy, they're going to be a problem. If you they know, get old Andrew Bogut, they are going to be a problem. Yeah, no, it's funny. When you're really, really good, you get really, really lucky. And in that case, I mean, having him, obviously, he played overseas, come back, he's healthy, as Chan yeah. said, he's moving well. And, and, and as Carlos uh, said, he, he just they, he knows the team. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he was a part of that group that learned sort of how to become a champion. And now as Cousins is down, stepping in, playing great in his role with yeah. this ball club. No, when a player of, of his ability and, and a, a, with his resume brings a different attitude to the game, what does it do for, for everybody else? Well, I mean, obviously, they're going to feed off of that. And uh, I thought it was funny during the, during the press conference there, somebody asked, you know, you use Kevin, you know, bringing the ball up the court. And he said, no, it wasn't, there's no different no. strategy. Yeah. He yeah. just had a different look in his eye. He was engaged. He was, you know, locked in and focused. And, you know, the team recognizes that, and they're going to go to him. And he kept delivering early. But he, he, you know, with all that was going on and all the talk and Patrick Beverly and his play, uh, you know, he, he was going to come out and, and have a reaction, and he did. And that's the exact kind of response that you wanted if you were Golden State. Um, obviously, what he did, he came out and punched him in the mouth. He literally came out there and shot all the shots he wanted to shoot, mm -hmm. whether they were contested or not. When you have your best defender on him, or he's getting open threes, or he's driving and kicking, he was always making the right play, getting to a spot, rising up, and he made all of them. So it's, it's deflating. You know, you have all this energy, like, here we go. And then all of a sudden, Kevin Durant runs off three in a row, four in a row, five in a row. And you're like, man, that's the shots we're supposed to live with. Right. And now we, they've had 41 in the first, first quarter. Come on, man. This is, you know, it's just not going to work like that. It's, so now you've got to adjust your defense. And now you're thinking, who's going to guard him? Do we have to switch? Uh, he's a handful. He's a handful. He's a handful. <laughs> what else can you say? I mean, what are you going to say? He's Kevin Durant. He's, he's, he's know, just, he's, people forget he's three, four-time scoring champ. Like, you know, he wanted to remind everybody who he really was. He's Kevin Durant. To it. We all, in the, in the pregame show, was wondering, you know, how will he respond? And he just showed us how he right. will respond. But it's different with him because with Steph Curry, even when he gets really hot, it's usually just within the flow of the game, yeah. right? Yeah. Kevin Durant has to seek out shots yeah. to a greater degree than Curry does. Yeah, I agree with that. And also, because of his length and his size, he's 6'11", 7 feet. When he gets to his spots, he's virtually unguardable because he has that feathery touch, that fall away. But tonight, you saw in the fourth quarter, just back-to-back -back threes. Um, you can put, you've got the ball on the string. He can go wherever he wants to get to. And I think he was more decisive tonight. That was the part that I liked the most about, about KD. When he's decisive and he has his mind made up, mm -hmm. he's unguardable. Yeah. They are a whole different beast when he gets in that mindset, yeah. that locked-in, I'm the best player on the court mindset. He's, they're, they're virtually unguardable. And, and what's interesting about him, too, guys, is that, you know, I mean, Steph is great, you know, one of the best shooters of all time, but, but KD is sort of that one-on-one that -on -one guy, that yeah. guy that, you know, you need a basket, you can go to him. He can score in a number of different ways. He's, like you said, seven feet tall, can shoot over you. Uh, so him being engaged and locked and just being aggressive. Yeah. You know, we talked before the game, even if he's missing his shots, just being aggressive, looking to be – the, the Kevin Durant that we always see, and, and, and he was that, you know, and, the, and more tonight. He got off 23 of them, more than twice as many as any of his teammates, and hit 11 of 13 from inside the three-point line, uh, three of 10. And from outside the line. If you're Doc Rivers, who we're going to hear from in, in just a moment, what, what do you say to your guys? I mean, they know the out of the hat in game two, and they saw the consequences of that. Here tonight, how, how deflating was this? I don't think it's deflating. You got to – you win. It's been one of my favorite teams to watch this year just because of their grit, their determination. They do love playing for each other. Listen, you lost a game, whether that was one or 100, the game is over, right? So now you approach the next game as, hey, we're at home. We got this chance to win. Let's go out here and play as hard as we can and play the way we're supposed to. Nine postseason games. They win game three by 27. Sets up Sunday's Game 4 back at Staples Center, 3.30 Eastern time on ABC. And, guys, this uh, series has already seen some violent swings back and forth. The Clippers pulled off the biggest uh, postseason comeback ever in Game 2. And tonight, their 27-point margin of defeat tied their franchise 
record for worst defeat ever. So what, what do we make of where the series is now and what to expect from game four? I think when the Warriors are locked in the way they were tonight and where they've been most of the series, honestly, except for the last debacle in game two, uh, they're just hard to guard. They're hard, they're hard to defend. They're hard to score on. They're just hard to beat. Um, so I think they've woken up. They've been awakened, as you said earlier, Matt, and I see them winning game four. I see them winning game four, and the guy that I think is going to have a breakout game is uh, Clay Thompson. Mm. I think he's been chilling. He's been playing good defense. Overdue. He's very overdue, and he could burst for 30 and a quarter. So um, it's going to be tough, but I got the Golden State Warriors. Yeah, I mean, I think, look, I think the, the Clippers are, they, they've been, they've had a fantastic season, a lot of character in that locker room. They really respond to Doc Rivers. Uh, they'll come out with a little bit more fight uh, in, in game four, but ultimately, Clay, Kevin, Steph, whoever, they're going to they're gonna play well and I yeah. think hit the win uh, in game four. Well, that's got very little to do with the Clippers, really, because everybody's picked the Warriors to reach the finals at least when they're at their best, right? And that's right. what we saw tonight for sure. That'll do it for our post-game coverage here as we do each and every playoff game throughout the postseason here in 2019. Out here and play as hard as we can and play the way we're supposed to play. Well, let's hear what Doc Rivers has to say about it. How are you? How's the baby? I should have babysit it for today. <laughs> it's been much nicer. All right, let's go. Uh, where did things go wrong today? Uh, when we showed up, you know, honestly, like they just they dissected us. I thought they were, uh, I just thought they were the more physical, uh, intense team, you know. You, you felt like, at least I did, you kind of felt like they were going to come in and try to throw a punch. Uh, and they did, and I just didn't think we responded very well to it, you know. Um, we had a lot of poor shooting nights uh, tonight, and the one thing against them, and it's, it's almost a replay of game one in a lot of ways, if you don't score against them, you can't beat them, no matter how your defense is. Uh, but part of the reason uh, scoring was a struggle was because we were taking it out a bounce the entire night so it's a little bit of both doc before the game you said if we go down 31 this time it's not going to turn out as well why yeah. did you think that if that even you know, if they did go up by then they would keep their foot on the gas rather than what happened in game two well i don't know if they did or didn't put their foot on the gas the last time we just came back you know to be honest but uh it's just not very smart to get down by 31. <laughs> that was that was my, i mean honestly i don't care who you're playing uh, if you get down, uh, it's hard, and the better the team, it's harder. Um, so to think that you're going to do that again is fool's gold, you know. But uh, I don't think our guys, I don't think that was their, our guys' game, game plan tonight to get down and make a comeback. You know, that, that wasn't in the plan. Give them credit. They played, they just played better, uh, and they made shots. Can you talk about the decision to start Jermichael in the second half? I just wanted to see if I could stretch the floor. Uh, I actually liked it. Uh, beginning of the third, uh, we got great shots. You remember the stretch? I think we had four or five wide open threes, but none of them went in. You know, and again, it's the same thing. I liked our, our shots better at the beginning of the third. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't go in. So, you know, film wise, it'll look good, uh, but it didn't help us. Upside. Coach, uh, what can your team learn from this game, and what is your message heading to game four on Sunday? Uh, you got to keep punching, you know. Um, that's what I told them in the locker room. You're going to get hit. Uh, we got hit tonight. Uh, we didn't throw any punches back. Uh, but that's what you have to do. And, you know, we win Sunday. It's a tie series. So, you know, it's again, it's a series. Thank God this is not college, you know. Considering Zeus struggles offensively and Jamichael's good open looks at the start of the third. Would you consider making that a permanent change in the starting I line? doubt it, but it's something, listen, all, 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 all plays are, you know, available for us because we're just trying to win each, win each individual game. So that's something we'll consider, but I doubt if we do it. Doc, the, the Pat Beverly, Kevin Durant dynamic was such yeah. a story in the last game, and it sort of didn't show up today. No. Pat was in foul trouble. He just yeah, I just game. thought you could, I didn't like early. You could see that it was going to be a tight called game. Yeah. And uh, I remember one of our coaches saying, this is good. I said, no, this is bad. This is not going to not going to be in our favor. And not that it was in either team's favor. Um, but what we were at times was the more physical team. By the way, I just thought they were by far the more physical team tonight. And, you know, 
the energy gets the advantage, and I thought it was them. So nothing materialized there. You know, we said before the game they're going to post some more. They did that, um, and he made shots. Hey, Coach, that was one of the things I was going to ask you. The Warriors talked a lot about the top lock defense that they yeah. saw from the Clippers, and you see Kevin Durant have 27 first half points without a single three. Yeah. Was that more them breaking through that top lock defense, or just? This yeah, I think it's a little bit for sure. You know, um, instead of having them at the elbows, you know, and we said it before the game, they're going to bring them to the right box, um, and he's going to score from there most likely. Um, you know, we didn't mind uh, some of those twos. Uh, what I didn't mind, like, was everyone was getting shots. It wasn't just him. You know, if he gets going and you take other guys out, then you got a chance. But everyone was getting open shots tonight. Um, I got to watch the film. Uh, I, I did see things that I thought we made mistakes on. Uh, but give them credit. They're ready for it. Hey, Doc, obviously shooters got to keep shooting. But on a night like this, is, is it get tough for them? Is it, is it the Warriors that kind of get in their head? Or is it just one of those nights? Or Gallo's haircut? Or Probably all, all of the above. You know, uh, we'll do a hair weave tonight. Uh, but no, really, we, we did get good, some good shots. But I didn't think we got a lot of good shots. You know, I thought their defense was better than our offense tonight. And I think you got to give them credit. And so when that happens, you start rushing shots, um, taking four shots. And I thought that's exactly what we did. I didn't think we made a lot of plays for each other tonight. I thought everybody wanted to win the game. That happens. But everybody wanted to win the game and not doing it the way we usually do it. Last couple here, right here. Um, Pat here with Hoops and Brews. Doc, um, are there any positives that you can take from this game that can maybe carry over to, carry over to um, game four as far as like... Yeah, game? yeah, for sure. We, we ended the game healthy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we live... Listen, game four is a different game. So, yeah, I don't, I don't overdo these games. Like, we had one by one or 50 or whatever. It's still game four is a new game, and we have to be ready for that. Last two in the back there. Hey, hey Coach, I want to know... Um, how much the game transformed from what the series transformed from one game to another? Is there any carryover? And then what's your message um, on on Sunday? How do you guys have to come out to get this win and jump on these guys early? We, well, we, I don't care if we don't jump on them early. Okay. I'd like to jump on them all game. You know, um, I just really thought they were the more physical team tonight. So that'll be one of my messages. Uh, Gallo was 2 of 13 offensively. Was yeah. there something you didn't like about his flow, or was it just missing shots? Probably both. You know, I always think when a guy is uh, missing shots, number one, it's got to be something they're doing. I think we all. Always just say he missed shots. He did miss some shots. He had some wide open shots. You know, he struggled in game two as well. And then in the fourth quarter, I think he had 17 points and, and we win the game. That's not a coincidence. If Gal doesn't score, uh, then we're going to struggle uh, and we need a scoring. Thank Thanks, guys.